Welcome to another You, Me, and BTC special. This time we are speaking with Alexis Iono. She works for BTC Jam, which is the world's first peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin lending platform. Ms. Iono will explain how the service works, how it began, how it can change the world, and much more. Stay tuned for this amazing discussion. We are coming to you once again from the Bitcoin in the Beltway conference, and we want to thank our sponsors for getting us there. API Coin is a robust, scalable, and secure Bitcoin API, perfect for all your programming needs. Monero is a brand new, untraceable cryptocurrency based on the CryptoNote protocol. If you're not already mining the new coin, you definitely want to check it out. Your hosts today are Daniel Brown, John Stewart, and myself, Tim Baker. Here we go. So, hey everybody, back again from the Bitcoin Beltway Conference. We are sitting down right now with Alexis Iono. She is uh, with BTC Jam, and seems pretty cool. She's going to tell us about that. So, yeah, tell us, first of all, I guess we just want to know, what is BTC Jam? BTC Jam is the first global peer-to-peer -peer lending network that uses Bitcoin. So, uh, basically, anyone can go and create a loan. First, they have to verify their identity with us, address, proof of income, and then they can sync their PayPal, Facebook, LinkedIn, and it's all allocated into a credit rating. And we give them a credit rating based on their risk and all the data points that they give us. And so then once they have submitted all this information, they can go and create a loan and they can set their own interest rates, their terms, and their payment schedule. And it could be for anything. Right now, we mostly have miners on there taking out loans for mining, more mining equipment and people starting small businesses, buying Bitcoin ATMs, various other things. And then once they have created their loan, a series of investors from all around the world will go through the listings and essentially crowdfund the loan. So it's all like micro lending. Nice. Now, uh, with Bitcoin, obviously, one of the biggest things is that it's unregulated, decentralized, irreversible. How have those things played in? Like, is it common for people not to end up paying back loans? And, and does that cause problems or does the rating system take care of that? And how does that all go? Uh, well, one of the biggest problems with Bitcoin and people seem to ask me is like, well, what if the price goes up some crazy amount? And this person, when they took out a loan, one Bitcoin was $100. And then next week when they have to pay it back, it's $1,000. Well, we have two types of loans. So there's one that's denominated in pure Bitcoin. And then there's one that's tied to Bitstamp USD. And when the one that's tied to Bitstamp USD, uh, say they take out the loan and the one Bitcoin's worth $100. And then next week it goes up to a thousand. Once they take out the loan, it's indexed at the price of 100. So the amount of Bitcoin that the investors may receive may fluctuate, but it's still the same dollar amount. And um, with the credit rating, the default rates kind of are like, they're directly related. So there's obviously like, there's like a 1.97% rate of default for A borrowers. And that's really good. But with D's, it's obviously it gets higher with the credit rating so the credit rating score is actually like a machine learning system that's based off of a multi-layer perception neural network and so it like predicts future behavior how long has btc jam been working and how long have you been working there well it's been a concept for two years and it's been we've been incorporated for one year and i've been working since february 2014 our founders are from Brazil. Well, we have one founder. He's Celso Pita. He's from Brazil. Uh, he came up with the concept of BTC Jam because in Brazil, APR there is 200%. So when he was in college, he was paying 10% a month for a loan. And he ended up having to take out a separate loan in order to pay off the same, this loan that he's taking out for college expenses. Can you tell us, I mean, you said there was like micro lending and... So can you tell us like what people have to do to get involved? Can you can anybody just do it with a little bit? And how does that work? Yeah, if you have just like a Satoshi, you can invest your Satoshi into a loan, which is the great thing about Bitcoin and Bitcoin. Like there's like traditional peer to peer lending sites like Prosper and Lending Club, and they're all restricted off of like the fiat currency that they use. But with Bitcoin, like not only does like the funding speeds are faster and like you can put in 
very small amounts in multiple loans, which we actually, we encourage because then it, you're diversifying your assets and then your returns will be less risky and healthier. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are, are fully functional right now. Can you tell us maybe where you need to go next? Uh, what kind of hurdles you're having to overcome next? Yeah, just future steps. Future steps would probably just educating our users, getting them, because with Bitcoin, not all of them are very like traditional investors. People are just early on computer geeks that <laughs> seem to have gone into Bitcoin and then they kind of go on to BTC Jam and then like a Bitcoin will be like, there'll be like one loan for one Bitcoin and the person will put like half a Bitcoin in it, which is crazy. You don't do that. You have to like put it in very small amounts and then so your risk will be lower. But uh, our next steps include just improving our credit rating algorithm and just getting people to know BTC Jam because we feel like it's a great tool, especially for developing countries where, like I said, in Brazil, APR is like 200%. And we have one use case from a guy in Argentina, Gaston Azzolini. And he took out a, like a series of loans on BTC Jam, and he actually funded a restaurant that he started in Argentina because he can't get a business loan there because you would have to have over a threshold of like your salary has to be over like some ridiculous threshold in order to get a business loan. Just are there any plans for you guys to include ways for people who don't have like a connection to the Bitcoin network or don't have like a, an ability to get onto the Internet? Do you have any future plans to uh, incorporate them? in your business plan? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's a little bit longer down our roadmap. Uh, we definitely want to just kind of focus on Bitcoin users right now, but we do want to get the unbanked because we feel like peer-to-peer -peer lending is the best way to go when it comes to like financial services because it's not too centralized of like us giving out money to people and setting our own interest rates for this person. No, anyone can set their own interest rate and they are funded by people from around the world. One thing we talk about quite a bit on the show is regulation because that's that's huge and andreas gave a cool talk yesterday about why it doesn't work and uh talked to us a little bit about that too are you guys suffering from any kind of regulation or are you worried about it is there going to be a problem or anything like that from the government yeah just like any other bitcoin company we're gonna have to deal with regulation well for instance in brazil the reason why we're not based in Brazil is because peer-to-peer -peer lending is actually illegal there. You'll go to jail for 10 years if you do peer-to-peer -peer lending. So, well, Bitcoin also solved that problem because in Brazil, you go to jail for doing peer-to-peer -peer lending if you're doing it in Ray Eyes, which is their fiat currency. So, yeah, we're definitely looking towards, like, regulation and how we're going to deal with it. So, you were kind of talking to us to us a little bit about this before we started recording this interview. I guess you kind of have like an interesting story about how you got involved with all this stuff. You want to just tell us how, how you started working there and everything? Well, okay, I'll start off how I got into Bitcoin. And I got into Bitcoin uh, like right after I graduated high school in 2012. And um, one of my fellow classmates, I was going to school for computer science, and I was getting into debt because I was having to pay for like my own tuition and my family couldn't afford to keep paying for like my own expense my college expenses so one of my classmates actually just introduced like bitcoin and at first i thought like man this guy's crazy like what is he talking about like internet money and magic internet money but uh, after i looked into it more you get this like profound sense of like your eyes open up and you see like this entire different world and you see more possibilities of like why didn't i even think of money like this you don't even when you look at bitcoin you it completely like revolutionizes your thought about how you see like payments or like the protocol of payments so after that i kind of researched bitcoin for a while and then for a year i started like my own blog where i did like flowcharts of like different like bitcoin companies and breaking down like altcoins like devcoin and <laughs> Yeah, so then once I moved to San Francisco, mostly I moved there just to get into like Silicon Valley and to like the Bitcoin industry because this is like, it's the tech hub of the world. And um, once I got there, I started going to like Bitcoin meetups and I went to like my first Bitcoin meetup and it was hosted in Coinbase's office. And it was so weird. It was super weird. I was, I was completely nervous and like by myself and they had everyone stand in a circle and like say why they were there and how they're involved with Bitcoin. And I was just like, well, I really like Bitcoin and I got into it in the last year. But uh, yeah, and then you're just like doing random things of, with Bitcoin, meeting people and going to events. It's definitely like the best way to get to know everyone and get around. And then I started working for BTC Jam. 
in February of 2014. Nice. Yeah, one of the last things we like to do with our guests is kind of ask for like a personal story that happened kind of in Bitcoin or crypto. I don't know if there's like a funny story or a, a story about seeing how it could like change the world. Uh, we got a couple scam stories this weekend. Any cool personal story about Bitcoin? Yeah, well, just how, like I said, it revolutionizes like thought of like payment systems. And even if Bitcoin doesn't become, I, I think it will definitely become a world standard of like a payment protocol. And it, to me, it, it's more of like a transition technology to something even bigger because Bitcoin has its faults and there are errors with the protocol and especially the daemon. But I think I see Bitcoin as like a transition technology into something greater because what's after Bitcoin? It's crazy, right? <laughs> and uh, so like personally, I think my story is how it revolutionized just the thought of just all technology in general and distributed networks and like having like peer-to-peer -peer different platforms so yeah i mean in, within btc jam like there are scammers there are people that will try to scam you and like our credit rating tries to like warn you ahead of time of like the scamming part and all of these other things but yeah yeah is there anything you'd want to plug any twitter handles or yeah okay btcjam.com and then you can find me at alexis iono on twitter a-i-o-n-o -O is my last name and yeah Alexis from uh, BTC Jam, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in to the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Remember that 75% of the tips we receive for this and all our other Bitcoin in the Beltway interviews will be sent directly to Sean's Outpost. As usual, all the music in the show was written and recorded by our own John Stewart. We'll see you next time.